we're going to be looking at free and forced oscillations. And for forced oscillations, we're going to be looking in particular at resonance. A free oscillation oscillates under its own natural restoring force. So we say it oscillates at its own natural frequency. An example would be a simple pendulum. If we displace the pendulum from its equilibrium position and release it, it will oscillate freely under its own natural restoring force, which is due to gravity. Another example would be a mass on spring. So if we were to displace the mass from the equilibrium position and release the mass, it would oscillate freely. And that is due to the natural restoring force, the tension in the spring. Also, if you strike a tuning fork, it will oscillate freely. A forced oscillation oscillates under the influence of an externally applied force. We call this a driving force. So it's oscillating at the forcing frequency or the driving frequency of the externally applied force. So here we have an example of a tuning fork that is oscillating freely, but when it's placed on top of a table, it forces the table to oscillate. So the table is oscillating at a frequency of the tuning fork. Another example would be string and wind musical instruments. So if you first consider string musical instruments, if we pluck the string, it vibrates and it forces the air and the body of the instrument to vibrate, to oscillate at the same frequency as the string is vibrating. For wind musical instruments, when you blow through the pipe, you are forcing the air inside and the pipe itself of the instrument to oscillate. This graph is showing that if we change the forcing frequency of the externally applied force, then the amplitude of the forced oscillation changes. And you can see that the amplitude depends on three things. That is the forcing frequency, the amplitude of your driver, the externally applied force, and how much damping there is for the oscillation, whether it's, there's light damping or heavy damping. Resonance is a special case of a forced oscillation, and it occurs when the forcing frequency of the driver, the externally applied force, equals the natural frequency of what is being forced, the driven. And its result is that you get a maximum transfer of energy from the driver, the externally applied force, to what's being driven, the forced oscillation. And as a result, you see when the forcing frequency equals the natural frequency, the amplitude of the forced oscillation is maximum. Damping affects the resonance because you can see that if you have heavy damping, so you've got a larger resistive force acting on the oscillation, then you can see that the amplitude at all frequencies is less than it would be if there was light damping and there's a smaller resistive force acting on the forced oscillation. And you also see that resonance where we get maximum amplitude, it is occurring at a slightly lower frequency. Examples of resonance would be an opera singer shattering glass. So that is the opera singer forces the glass to oscillate and if the opera singer produces a note which matches the natural frequency of the glass, the glass will oscillate with maximum amplitude 
such that it shatters or breaks. Another example is the Tacoma Narrows bridge collapse. So here there was strong winds and the winds were forcing the bridge, it was a suspension bridge, to oscillate and the frequency of the wind matched the natural frequency of the bridge so the bridge oscillated with maximum amplitude that it eventually collapsed. A useful example of resonance is in a microwave oven for cooking food. So the microwave forces the water molecules in the food to oscillate and the frequency of the microwaves matches the natural frequency of the water molecules so the water molecules will oscillate with a maximum amplitude such that they can heat up the food. Another useful example is using ultrasound to break gallstones or kidney stones in the body so it's a non-invasive technique so it doesn't require surgery. So ultrasound is directed towards the gallstones or kidney stones forcing them to oscillate and the frequency of the ultrasound matches the natural frequency of the gallstones so that they oscillate with maximum amplitude so that they eventually will break up into very tiny pieces and so they can leave the body in a natural way.